Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us again today. Uh, this is another installment of the McGee Law Firm's interview with the experts. And very happy to have with me today, Mr. Tom Vance. He's with Advanced Senior Options. And so number one, welcome and thank you for being here. Well, thank you, thank you for having me. And Tom is, I'm gonna go ahead and say, he is an expert on all things Medicare. Um, I'm gonna have him kind of describe his background, but if you're looking for some really good detailed expert type advice on Medicare, you're really gonna to wanna to listen to this today. So first Tom, tell us a little bit about your background and the path that led you to becoming an expert in Medicare. Well, they, yeah, I started, I was in the financial services and I went independent in 2002. Started working a lot with the social security office because it's very hard to get good information sure. uh, in the marketplace. Uh, in 2005, I became disabled and ended up working capital and offered me a job teaching. Okay. And I wrote a social security seminar and it was a CE course. We charged $50 for it for four hours. Okay. And I had non, non insurance agents starting to take the course because they heard it was good information. Okay. So I knew we were on to something. Right. So, Wonderful. So. And so now, so now it's been about 15 years that you've been working in this area. Yes, Is sir. that correct? Yeah. Okay. And how long have, and you are the owner of Advanced Senior Options, you and your wife. Is yeah, my, my wife and I started the agency back in uh, 2014, started okay. out, out of our dining room. Okay, and wonderful. Then, uh, about a year later, we moved to Arlington and then we tripled our space where okay. we looked at Arlington right, right across from the ballpark. Wonderful, mm -hmm. okay. And so for your company, um, when somebody uh, reaches out to you and expresses an interest in meeting with you, um, you, I think you, you were telling me beforehand that you can meet with them in Arlington or you can travel maybe some other places in the metro area to meet. Is that right? Absolutely. We're, okay. We we offer free consultations either okay. at our office, in their home, or anywhere in between, wherever they feel most comfortable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And give us kind of a, a good idea of what are the services that you provide to your clients? What are the kind of things when they come to you, what are you helping them accomplish? Our main thing is we, we want to make sure that it's one thing to, to sign up for an insurance plan. There's lots of insurance plans out there. So we really want to see how are you going to use your insurance. Okay. So we have we literally have contracts with every single Medicare Advantage plan in the Metroplex okay. and the and, and many of the supplements. So we don't have to worry about are we going to have the right product for them. We really want to know how are you going to use your insurance. We want to know your doctors, your prescriptions. And then plan surgeries or extra benefits that you may want, like dental, hearing, and vision. Okay. Things that Medicare doesn't cover. Okay. So basically, somebody who is currently on Medicare or who is maybe close to getting on Medicare, you serve as in an advisory role um, to help them figure out how to supplement that and the, exactly. the, the way to navigate it. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. And then also, just to be real clear, uh, when you have clientele coming to you, um, unlike with me, they're not paying you for your service. Is that right? That's, That's right. Our, our services are, are complimentary. Uh, okay. as we, get, we get paid by the carrier, whether it be a Medicare supplement okay. or Medicare Advantage plan or prescription drugs. And the the care insurance companies pay us. Got and, it. and CMS dictates our, our compensation. Okay. So we're not, we don't get paid more if we go one way or another. Okay. So guys, if, if you heard that, that's a great thing. Uh, what that means is that you don't have to pay Tom out of your pocket for his expert advice. Um, so there's almost no reason not to contact him if, if you have uh, Medicare issues, concerns, or seeking information. Um, let's, let me talk to you about some things here, because this, this can be a very complicated, mystifying area for some people. Um, what are the various parts of Medicare, and what does each one cover? So okay. we'll start with that. Yeah. So whenever we talk about the word parts, when you hear the word part, that means it's part of the government. So we have Medicare Part A, that covers your facility-based care. Okay. Medicare Part A is funded by payroll taxes. Okay. So every dollar you earn, you pay 1.45% okay. on that, and your employer matches that. So that covers things like hospital, skilled nursing, home health care, psychiatric hospital, and, and hospice. Okay. okay. And then there's Medicare Part B, that technically is optional because you have to pay for it. The government okay. can't make you buy something. Sure. So you enroll in Medicare Part B, and that has a monthly premium dictated on your earnings. Now, not earnings this year, or your earnings two years prior to enrolling into Medicare. And that covers your doctors, uh, any outpatient type of facilities, uh, ambulances, those things. Okay. So that's A and B, and that's the original Medicare that okay. was founded in 1965. 
And then they added Medicare Part D, which is prescription drug coverage Got in it. 2006. Okay. So the, the original Medicare is A and B, and then they added Part D for drugs. Okay. And now a lot of companies, what they what do is there a the C? Health, there is. Okay. And what they do is Medicare Part C has A, B, and D together. Got it. Equals Medicare Part C. And that's what you see a lot of TV commercials are, okay. where they're combining your, your facility, your doctor, and your drugs all in one plan. Got it. And that's called Part C. Okay. And is what 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 are the newer um benefits provided through Medicare? What did would the most recent be the addition of uh, covering the medicines, or is there the, anything more new than that? Or yeah, the, the real, the, the newest thing really started last year and been expanded is the insulin coverages. Insulin, they make, yeah, okay. they, they've really expanded to make insulin uh, cover now. Now, in the house, they're talking about there's three things that Medicare doesn't cover that most seniors wish it did. Right, and that was your eyes, your ears, and your teeth. Got it. Okay. So this year there was some talk because they did pass in one of the houses. The, the cab, dental, and vision, and hearing included. Okay. They were hoping that dental and, or that vision and hearing would be in effect by 2022. Okay. It, it hasn't made it through the past. Got but it. But right now, okay. dental, hearing, and vision is not covered by Medicare. Okay, but it's been on the table and discussed. It's just been on the table discussed, and that's where some of the advanced plans come into play. Okay, so we'll just keep up with the new cycle for that, right? That's right, <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, and tell me, what are the, the different types of Medicare Advantage plans? Um, so the different types of the Advantage plans and the pros and cons of each one from your perspective. Okay. In the Medicare Advantage plan world, there are the three major ones that are here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. You have a PPO, okay, okay, uh, an HMO, and okay. then you have an MSA, medical savings accounts. So in a PPO, it allows you to go to any doctor that's in the network or will agree to accept the, um, the insurance company's terms. Yeah. For payment. A lot of times right. people think if I have a PPI and go to any doctor. Right. The doctor still has to agree to take the insurance company's concerns. So there's no referral needed for a PPO. Got it. An HMO is network based. Lots of times there's going to be a primary care doctor and this is going to dictate where you can go to. Okay. And then they have here in the metrics we've expanded, there, there's a couple more companies that offer what's called medical savings account MSAs. These are high deductible plans. Yes. And you can go to any doctor that takes Medicare. Okay. And you actually, there's no premium to those. You can go all over the country, no referrals needed. Okay. But but you're getting money put into a savings account, kind of like an HSA okay. account. And then you will pay those monies. And once you go through that bank account, then you start paying out of your own pocket. Okay. And so part of what you do would be to advise an individual person or family or a couple. Um, on depending on their circumstances, financially, health related, which is best for them. Is that, is that be accurate? That's correct. Okay. The, the one thing that they, the advantage plans is they all put a cap on your maximum out of pocket costs. Because okay. with regular Medicare, there is no limit to how much money you can spend on medical bills. Okay. On the advantage plans, they all put a cap on what your out of pocket costs could be. Okay. All right, and then and we've got some great questions here um, that were that actually have been sent to us. And so I want to ask this: What if someone has a high deductible health plan through their employer? How does that affect their Medicare enrollment? Okay, with a high deductible plan, it means you're now eligible to participate in still a health savings account. So you have pre-tax money coming out of your paycheck. Okay. So it's pre-tax money into a savings account that grows year after year, and when you use that for of health costs, it's tax free. Got it. Okay, but in order to qualify, you have to be covered by high deductible health plan. When you're 65, if I enroll in Medicare Part A, mm -hmm. now there's no additional premium for me, so why not? It's free, right? right. Except that now eliminates me from being able to participate in an HSA account. Got it. So okay. if you're going to continue to work for an employer, you may not want to enroll into Medicare Part A, even though it doesn't cost you. Just anything. wait till you retire. Basically. Just wait till you retire. Okay. Account. Mm -hmm. um, now here's a scenario. Um, so a, my spouse and I are covered by a high deductible health plan through my employer. I have an HSA account that I currently contribute to through my payroll. Each year I contribute the maximum allowable to HAS for family coverage plus the 1000 catch up contribution for each of us. My employer does not contribute anything to my HSA. I turn 65 next year and plan to keep our high deductible health plan after I turn 65. After I turn 65, will my, my spouse be able to open an HSA and contribute to it? Okay. So if the 
regardless of the employer's contributing, once you once you turn 65, mm -hmm. if you sign up for Medicare Part A, mm -hmm. you won't be able to contribute anymore. If okay, your spouse curious. is under 65, right. she may still be able to contribute into the age okay. thing. So you don't want to sign up for Part A if you're going to continue the group coverage. Okay. If you're over 65. So just period in the story. Do not sign up for that. Medicare Part A. There's lots of things that you've got to sign up for A, you're going to get a penalty. Right. Got to sign up for Part B. In reality, you have to sign, you have to have group coverage, you have to have credible coverage. Okay. You don't have to have Medicare, you have to have credible coverage. Okay. Now let me ask you this. So somebody um, comes to you and they have health insurance through an employer with over 20 employees. And one of the spouses plans to continue working past age 65 and keep their current health insurance through their current employer. Is there any benefit to enrolling in Part A when they turn 65? If they're not, if they're not participating in a high deductible plan, go ahead and enroll in Part A. Okay. Because what that'll do is that will help make sure that you don't fall into a penalty trap in Part A. Okay. It, it gets really dicey because when you leave your employer plan, yeah. you have to have Part A in effect the day you leave. Okay. You have eight months to sign up for Part B. You have 63 days to sign up for Part D. Okay. You make that any more confusing. Right. <laughs> <You> <laughs> right. So if you're, if you're still going to work and you're not, you don't have any access to the HSA, yeah. go ahead and sign up for Medicare Part A. And that's going to help make sure that you don't fall into a trap when you when you get into it. And guys, this you know this detailed information and deadlines, depending on if you do this, if you do that, to me it really reinforces the fact that you need to call Tom, right? It, I mean, this is an absolute maze, and it sounds like there's some traps in the maze here and there too. And so Tom's the guy that knows how to navigate the maze properly because he's been doing it for 15 years. So this is great information. Um, and then, so let me ask you this, uh, does a pay raise in social security impact Medicare? It, it has a couple of impacts because the, this year we're getting a 5.9% pay raise in social security. Okay. So what's it doing is that if folks are right on the borderline for getting assistance, for getting help through Medicaid, right? 5.9% is going to bump their, the average check is going to go up by $92. But if we're not the average check, that extra money increasing, if the income levels don't increase enough for Medicaid funding, yeah. you can find out three years ago, I had a client that was $6 away from being able to get assistance. Okay. After last year, they became $9 away. Okay. After this year projected rate, they could become $15 away because Got of it. the added increases. Okay. So it can have an impact on uh, the, the lower income folks and and, yeah. and social security is designed to help people above poverty level. Right. But our spending power is really not keeping up with, with that. Right. Technically it's it's achieving its goal for 93% of our students, keeping them above poverty, poverty level. The okay. problem is our spending dollars though. Yeah, yeah. It, it is not quite keeping up. Got it. Okay. Um and then tell us this. Uh, what are traditional Medicare premium costs in the out of pocket in the annual out of pocket costs, such as deductibles and co-pays? What does that look like right now? Okay. Normally, we would know exactly what the out of pocket costs are going to be for next year. Yeah. Um, they haven't made. They haven't done the decision. Okay. I've got the. Uh, you know, right now the projected Medicare Part B premium is going to go the base from 148.50. To 158.50. Got it. So anytime there's a pay raise in Social Security, the Medicare Part B premiums are going to increase. Okay. So that's another impact there. Your Part B deductible this year is at $203. Okay. It's projected to go to $217 next year. Got it. Uh, some of the hospital costs. When you go into a hospital, people think if I have Medicare Part A, I go in the hospital, it's going to cover all my costs. You're there one day or 60 days, one through 60. Okay. Today's numbers is you write a check for $1,484. Okay. After 60 days, it starts to become a per day Got cost. Okay. Uh, as high as $741 a day wow. if, you're, if you've been in hospital for over 90 days. Okay. It can get kind of expensive. Very expensive. Yes, yeah, that could really hurt some people. Um, okay, now here's another question. If somebody turns 65 in six months, so they're six months away, from becoming 65, and they will be covered by employer's health insurance, um, should they enroll in Medicare at all? And if so, which parts? Okay. Again, it depends on depends. which, when, yeah, when do they want to have their Medicare affected? Okay. If, if my employer has over 20 employees, right. they cannot make me go into Medicare. They have to still provide a group insurance. Okay. So large companies. 
So when do I want my Medicare effect dictates? You can sign up for Medicare three months before your 65th birthday, and then it's effective the month of. So my birthday is in April. So if I sign up in January, February, or March, my Medicare will be effective April 1st. Okay. If I sign up in April, it becomes effective in May. Now, if I sign up in May, it becomes effective in July. Okay. There's, a, there's a delay when you start signing. So if I sign up in June, it's August. July, it ends up being September. So it really depends when do you want your Medicare benefits to be in effect will dictate when you need to sign up for it. Got it. Okay. Um, and again, guys, that's why you need to talk to him before you do these things. There's so many, so many different factors to consider in the decision making, depending on your circumstance. Um, okay, let me ask you this. What do you consider to be a good source of reliable information, other than yourself, of course, to be a good source of reliable information about the various aspects of Medicare, such as timeframes for enrolling costs and how to avoid making mistakes, et cetera? Um, uh, what, what, what do you consider to be good sources of that where people can find really reliable information? I actually live on Medicare.gov. Okay. Medicare.gov. Not the .coms, not the .org, but Medicare.gov. Medicare.gov. Uh, I really wish that at but any time, anytime if it's, you know, as soon as January 1st, 2022 hits, yeah. anything 2019 and earlier, I yeah. wish would just go away. I wish okay. I thank you because too many times people read stuff on the internet to think it, it's they don't look at the date that was written. Okay. And next year they're reacting on old information. So guys, that's yeah, and that's a big problem uh, with Medicaid guys is you start researching on the internet. You could have information that's accurate two years ago. Right? Yeah, so exactly. um, you, you need to be very careful about that. Um, so Medicare.gov, and is that this might be hard for you to answer? Um, but you know, there I, I could tell somebody. Well, you can Google the Texas Estates Code on the internet, mm -hmm. which has all the estates laws and, and, and the probate laws. But honestly, it would be hard for a lot of lay people to really decipher it. Um, Medicare.gov, is it pretty, for somebody that's not like you, mm -hmm. they're not an expert, they're kind of new to Medicare, just now starting to look into it. Um, is it fair, do you think it's, they do a good job laying it out in layman's terms or is it difficult to, to decipher? It is. It's getting better. Okay. They keep they constantly are changing the Medicare.gov. Uh, it is sometimes a little bit hard to, to navigate, but you get the true numbers. If on the search keys, you want to look for things like income adjusted IRNNA. You want to look for things like when do I sign up for Medicare? There are more and more educational seminars being done throughout the, the metrics. So look for an educational seminar. Oh, great. Uh, whether okay. you buy, you know, we, we do a lot of those and other agents do okay. educational seminars. So you guys at Advanced Senior Options do seminars. That's um, you do live seminars? Yes, we do okay. them in restaurants at our office. And, okay. And have seminars. you, and I, and I, I just asked this because I had to kind of start doing things this way once COVID hit. Do you guys ever do online seminars? We do. We, okay. we've, we've embraced or attempted to embrace the, the Zoom world. The, the okay. World. We're licensed in 18 different states. And guys, I'm so going to gonna pause here for a second um, and uh, just give you some of the information for advanced senior options. So you guys can go ahead and look them up on the internet, maybe on your computer, save that page so you, you can go back to it. But it's www.advancedsenioroptions.com. So pretty easy, right? Yeah, it's the name easy. of the company, mm -hmm. advancedsenioroptions.com. So, and do you, on your website, do you, will you have any upcoming seminars? Yeah, we, on there? we sure do. We have okay. upcoming seminars, events on there, and that gets updated about every two weeks. That okay. Gets updated. So I want to encourage you guys either to seek out one of Tom's seminars or just seek him out personally. If you'd rather, if you feel like, you know what, I'm just ready for a direct conversation, seek him out for that as well. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay, let's talk about income related monthly adjustment amount, otherwise known as IRMA. Um, how does IRMA affect somebody's premiums with Medicare? The, yeah, right, the base premium projected 158, because this is what about projections, okay. is if you, as an individual, if you make $91,000 or less two years ago, so in 2022, that means in 20 year 2020, uh, married, okay, you just double that for 182,000. Okay. That base, the more you make, the higher your Medicare Part B premiums will be. Okay. So the base premium, the 158, that only really covers about 25% of actual Medicare costs. Okay. So if you're an individual and you make, 
five hundred thousand dollars or more, if you're married making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars or more, right, your Medicare Part B premiums could be as high as five hundred thirty eight dollars per month. Okay. So your income really dictates what that Part B premium is going to be. Got it. And it's always income from the two years before you actually start Medicare. Okay. So you want to do some planning and some income planning. And my understanding is there, if you think that you've been wronged by the IRMA adjustment. There's an appeals process, is that right? That's correct. There is a form on Medicare.gov where we can send you out those forms to fill out to do an okay. appeal. Um, and the appeals are if your income is lower, uh, if one of the spouses has passed away. Okay. Um, so they're really looking, they're trying to be fair, right? I think, but I think they count some stuff that maybe they shouldn't have. Well, I, you know, I would imagine, I mean, the, I mean, how many, and maybe you know, how many Americans are on ballpark or on Medicare at any one point in time? I mean, is it 80 million or do you have a sense of that? Yeah, right now, I believe we have, uh, I think it is, I'm trying to remember the, I'll get my social security and all my Medicare sure. numbers mixed up on there. But uh, I believe we have 16, I think 16.8 million people. Okay. So that's a lot to manage, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see yeah. how human error comes into play. And exactly. Sometimes they're not going to be right. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, I'm sure they try to be, but sometimes mm -hmm. they're just not going to be. Well, we need to want, make sure we don't fall into the trap. So, uh, I'm, you know, you hear pay off your house before you retire. Yeah. So I'm 63. I'm going to go ahead and take money out of my retirement account to pay off my house. So I'll be mortgage free. And what I just did, I just accidentally increased my income. Right. So now when I hit age 65 for the next two to three years, possibly. Okay. I'm going to be paying a lot more for my Medicare Part B premiums than had I known to keep under certain limits and not artificially increase my income. Okay. Now, Let's talk a little bit about Medicaid. This is also an area that I work in some, um, but discuss Medicaid qualification and qualifications and taxation levels with us. Okay, all right. So we're looking at Medicaid. Medicaid impacts how you've seen the, the PV commercials get the $148 back. Right. Okay, if you're on Medicaid, which is a state program, you're able to, they will go ahead and fund that $148 okay. for you. So if your income as individual is $1,469 or married, if your monthly income is $1,980, that's the, that's the most you can make and have the state actually pay for your Medicare Part B premium. Okay, got it. If, if you, the commercials where you get everything for free, all the transportation, you don't have to pay for anything. Those income levels are $1,094 for an individual okay. and uh, $1,472 for a married post. Okay. And that's where you get everything we've seen. And guys, let's go ahead and get your questions ready. Um, there's a, isn't there an Aaron, in there a, you can't see Aaron, but isn't there a question and answer here? Yes, we actually have two questions. Okay, so we already have two questions. We're going to get to those in a, in a few minutes. Um, a couple more of my questions. Um, so please get those sent in and Aaron will read those out to us here in a minute. Um, so... Talk to us about the alphabet soup deals when people can enroll in Medicare, choose a plan, and then change a plan. Yeah, it's really when you first turn 65, you have what's called your IEP. Okay. And IEP stands for initial election period. Okay. Okay. So I signed up for part A. I'm still working. I didn't sign up for B yet because I'm okay. still working. A year later, now I decided to sign up for Medicare. Now I'm at my ICEP, okay. initial coverage election period. So you got IEP, then you got ICEP. Got it. Okay. Right now, we're in the middle of what's called AEP, the annual enrollment period or annual election period. So that's called AEP. From January 1st to March 31st is called open enrollment period, OEP. So if you signed up for a vantage plan during the, during the AEP period of time, and you made a mistake or it's not what you thought it was, you can make a change during OEP. Okay. If you have, if you delayed your B and missed the sign up for B, you have to sign up for January 1st to March 31st, and then your Medicare Part B takes effect on July 1st. Okay. Now, to make AEP and OEP and IEP, to have it even more confusing, right now we're in AEP, but if you go to Medicare.gov, it says we're in OEP, Got open it. enrollment period. Okay. So no wonder people get confused because you have all these different yes. uh, acronyms. If you move, if you get Medicaid, if you lose Medicaid, then you have something called an SEP, okay. Special Election Period. So there's lots of different alphabet soups out there of when to enroll in and, and what to do. I mean, just keeping up with the terminology is a, you need a degree for that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Or, a, or a class, <laughs> a, like a semester long class to, 
to know the acronyms and the terms. So, okay, last question from me, and then we're going to take some questions here from our audience out there in the web world. Um, what is the impact on Medicare when someone has Medicaid or loses Medicaid qualification? So when you have Medicare and Medicaid together, there are special plans okay. that address those individuals. They get extra benefits to make sure that they're getting the most for their tax dollars and the state Medicaid dollars. Okay. And so a lot of times these plans will have zero dollar premiums. If you lose your Medicaid benefits, yeah. then all of a sudden, instead of a zero dollar premium, now that becomes a premium to them. Okay. Instead of having a zero dollar copay for their doctor's visits, now they have to start paying for the doctor business. So what they need to do is, if you lose your Medicaid, you need to change to a regular Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. If I'm in a regular Medicare Advantage plan and I get Medicaid, I need to move into a plan specialized for those that have Medicare and Medicaid. Okay. So you can, if I have, if I'm used to paying zero and I lost my Medicaid, because I do have to renew that every year, then all of a sudden I thought I'm not I'm paying zero and all of a sudden I'm getting costs. Sure. And I don't want to pay those costs when I don't have to when I can go to a different plan. Okay. And just to uh, let you guys know, so Tom, your office number is 817-809-4453. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, guys. So 817-809-4453. And the website is advancedseniorauctions.com. So guys, please. Look up Tom, uh, find his seminars, or if you already know, I just need to talk to him, please give them a call so you can talk, schedule a meeting with him. But now let's, we're going to take some questions that maybe some of you guys have had. So Aaron, if you could read the first one out, please. The first one, can you discuss the two-year look-back effect that occurs in circumstances like rock convergence or possibly selling a farm and having a windfall? Okay, yeah. So what, that, what you want to do, the two-year look-back is going to be for that that income when you're looking at so next year i'm turning 63 so i know that in 2024 i'm going to sign up for medicare so i don't want to do anything that's going to increase so i don't want to take any Roth conversions because that will artificially increase my income if you're single you want to stay below ninety-one thousand dollars a year if you're married you want to stay below the hundred eighty-two thousand dollars a year in income so if we're making if we're married and we make a hundred and we want to do a Roth conversion, we can convert some of that, but you don't want to go past those limits. Okay. Those limits on there. If you have a one-time windfall, um, and you can apply to Medicare. So this is a one-time. It's like the selling a farm. For yeah, you, you sell a farm. Yeah. farm. You, you don't do that every year. Most people don't. That's right. right. Or you get an inheritance and you end up selling probably from an inheritance. Exactly. Then you're going to have to go and say, look, you try to apply. And typically what it'll do is, you, you file for uh, uh, an appeal of that IRMA. Okay. They may hear you about March or April. And then if they're going to do an adjustment, the adjustment happens typically around July 1st, Got it. six months later. But they used to go ahead and automatically do the adjustments. But now you have to actually file a form and request it. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. What states are you licensed in? Um, okay. Yeah. We're licensed in California, New Mexico, Texas. Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida. Those okay. are the states that we're licensed in. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. The next one is, is there a table available to individuals that allows one to calculate or at least estimate the Medicare premiums based on income changes from open year to the next? If so, where can this be found? This question refers to the income bump from a Roth conversion or the sale of a farm question asked previously. Okay, the unfortunately we're we're kind of handcuffed right now because we're still waiting for the government to release what the new IRMA tables are going to be. Right now, the what's what's on place there, we know what those are. I have projections of where we think the premiums are going to be. Yes. The five hundred thirty-eight dollars per month. That's actually a projection of somebody makes over seven hundred fifty thousand. Yes. As soon as those numbers are released. I'll have them available on our website. So they'll be available on that okay. options as soon as, as soon as they, they announce the release. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I think what happens is that the government thinks that so many people are going to go on an advantage plan yeah, or they're yeah. going to do the other by a supplement plan. So people aren't just going to have Medicare by itself. So they don't feel like they have to get these numbers in place. Okay. I mean, really, they, they do. But good info. Anything else here? It looks like there's one more are okay. Tom's income figures AGI. Uh, what you look at is yeah, adjusted gross income. 
they look at your they look at your gross, and then it's the adjusted gross income is, is what they determine for your uh, for your earn -up. Okay, very good. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, please find Tom in advanced senior options. Uh, look for, like I said, look for his seminars, webinars, or meet with him in person. Um, also, at some point, we will be getting this uh, this um, conversation here up on our social media. So if you want to rewatch it, I know sometimes things move fast, right? When we're talking and there's new terms and legal terminology, government type terminology, things move quick. But at some point, we'll have this up on social media. If you want to rewatch it, please do. Uh, but thanks so much. You guys have a, a great weekend. We're almost to the weekend. Have a great, <laughs> great Friday and a great weekend, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you.